what connections or ideas or um, insights or changes of practice and direction are you considering as a result of the time that you spent here? Just to be able to uh, rub shoulders with people who I've only read about, that's you and Bill and uh, Lisa, is a big high. Okay, so you, others can have George Clooney as a superstar, but you're all my superstar. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. Um, so just to be able to do that, that means to, to hear from those minds and to be in close proximity of those minds, that's great things to us. Uh, it helps reaffirm, it helps challenge, it helps uh, uh, put into perspective uh, the work that, that I'm doing or we're doing on a daily basis because we get so involved in doing, sometimes we don't have the time to pause and, and see whether in the bigger picture are we still following the right beacon. And so the conference um, allows the pause and I think that's very, very essential in anything that one, one, one can do. Um, and uh, the three things that I'm going to take away if I, when I'm going to go back and, and share, one is of course Isa's story of elevation. I've always believed it. And I guess Isa. Yeah. <laughs> Superstar. <laughs> I mean, it was just so great. You know, because I, I use different words to talk about it and, and maybe a different jargon, but just that, that story. Um, uh, to take back and say, oh my god, he's just saying the same thing. <laughs> it's going to be great. Uh, the second is what uh, we talked about, purpose. And I think for me, uh, since I'm now working with the adolescents, my first batch is graduating. And to know from the research uh, that uh, Bill shared today that uh, very often it's not going to be the family and they're going to find it by themselves is great. It's great to see because I'm say, seeing that. And I didn't know whether that was the right thing or not. So it's giving me a great lens to look at purpose again. So that was great. And I think from you, I really uh, understood this care deficit and this efficacy deficit because I see that again. I see that uh, with the stories I'm getting back that uh, children at the lower demographics have so much to care about but don't have the agency to do it. And the ones who have all the agency sometimes don't have anything to care about. And to see that um, uh, clearly again um, allows me to go back um, better prepared to do the work that will continue and for us to be uh, as a team to regroup with the kids to regroup and share these insights because when I tell them how Ghana said this they all say oh my god it's too good <laughs> so that would have a great time going back. There are, there are three things that uh, really stuck out with me as well. Um, one actually is this um, the application of design thinking uh, to everything we're, we, we care about and think about. Uh, and and the, the, you know, your, your line that design thinking means asking uh, what if instead of what's wrong. Um, I mean, it's true on everything, but if you apply that to pretty much any aspect of American politics, um, and it, it's, it's very easy today to say what's wrong with American politics and with our democracy and uh, and it's very hard to ask what if. It's really hard. And that's partly out of encrustation of institutions, and, um, and it's partly about just uh, being out of that uh, small R Republican habit. Uh, the habit you have in your small town where ev everybody is a volunteer, everybody is a co owner, uh, uh, and therefore everybody has that heightened sense of responsibility. So, design thinking, I think, and, and, and having us just. Um, you know, we talked a bit about this on you know, Friday in one of the workshops. It, it, it's noticing design, right? Just in, in the first place, attending to the fact that we are surrounded by the consequences of design choices, either good or bad or unintentional, right? Um, and, and interrogating those and asking, well, why was it? Well, why was it that we inherited the institutions or arrangements that were designed this way? Um, and what is it about them that could be undesigned or redesigned? I think that's a, a profoundly revolutionary uh, insight when applied to this uh, citizenship. Uh, the second big takeaway uh, that Damien and I have had, um, there he is over there, um, over the course of the uh, three days, uh, so many conversations uh, about what he shared on stage yesterday, the idea of citizen artists, uh, and, and which I think of in both directions. Right? It, it is an artist as citizen in the way that Damien and Yo-Yo Ma and others uh, uh, both preach and practice. But it's also citizen as artist, 
right? Uh, each of us is a social artist. Uh, and we can be intentional and get better practice and have a, a, a vision of, again, what if creativity about the, the canvas that we're painting on, whether it's in your town or um, in, a, in a particular policy domain or whatever. Um, that idea of citizen artist, citizen as artist, artist as citizen, um, is a good, deep, rich mind uh, uh, to name. I'm hearing the two of you speak back to back. I made a connection which I never made before. I mean, when we think of the founding fathers, we think of Jefferson and Franklin because of their role in the founding documents. And Jefferson was an architect, and of course Franklin was an inventor. And uh, you know, I, never, I thought of them primarily in terms of words and law, but it's probably not an accident that they have that uh, creation mentality. And I leave very heartened by the sense of building the field. <coughs> And I know that with a lot of people in higher ed here, <clears throat> it's a little risky to use the word field because technically in higher ed, this is not a field. And, and Damien and, and Issa and Bill would not be considered in the same field at all because fields are defined by disciplines. But this is how I see the field. And it, it may be using your metaphor more of a, of a field in the world or, or a scientific field, like a magnetic field, that, um, I feel like character education is now becoming back in the discourse of American, of American education. And one of the main reasons is this new book by Paul Tuff. <clears throat> Some of you may have read. It's called How, How Children Succeed. And it's a New York Times bestseller, and it's about character education. Um, but it focuses on one particular aspect of character. And to use a, a construct that Tom Lacona from Portland has built, he, he says there's two kinds of character. There's performance character, perseverance and focus and organization, the things that make you get ahead in the world. And then there's moral and ethical character, things like compassion and contribution and respect. And Tom Lacona is saying you need both. If you're a good person but you're disorganized and you never get anything done, you're not good to anybody. But if you are an organized, very focused, person who has grit and perseverance, you don't necessarily do good in the world. In fact, you could just as easily use that for harm. But this new book on character education is focusing entirely on performance education, on performance character, which is, it comes from the fact that some of the high-performing charter networks have managed to get kids into college, but they're not persisting in college. And what they're finding is a deficit of character in grit, in perseverance, in their resilience as academic students. And so there's now a new push that that kind of character really matters. And I think it does. But I think it's not always wedded to the character of more and moral and ethical depth. And I think that's what this field is in this room. That it's about contribution, and it's about artistic contribution, as well as philosophical contribution and moral contribution. And that it's not just about purpose, as Bill said, it's about having a noble purpose a good purpose. And I think this, this convening is building that field at a really important time. I think we're at a moment right now when character education is on the rise. It has been unspoken about for almost 20 years because it was considered too values-laden and too connected with politically touchy things. But the word character and character education are now being used again. But there's a danger that they won't be used for what, we, what matters to us here. And so I think this convening is sort of naming that field and saying that artistic contribution and, and moral and civic contribution really matter. And it's not just about getting uh, yourself to have more grit so you do better in making money in the world. So I think having these sort of disparate traditions as part of one amalgam field here matters to